Hi, this is Alex Masichev of Antvilion, the developers of Dita2 Dita CMS. In the next few minutes, I am going to show you how Dita2 can help you manage translations. To better understand how Dita2 can solve you translation management needs, let's take a quite typical workflow that you can see quite often in many companies. Let's say you have a project approved for translation from English to German. You expect the translation to be ready in a couple of weeks from now. However, while the project is being translated, you need to keep working on the English sources. A problem that might arise here is that by the time you got the translation, your content in English will be several versions ahead, so the English content and the German translation will be unsynchronized. To solve this issue, we are going to use Baseline Manager for Dita2. With Baseline Manager, before you send the project for translation, you create a snapshot of the project called Baseline. Basically, Baseline represents your project frozen at a certain moment of time. While the project is being translated, you can keep working on it. After you received the translation, you can specify whether you want to upload it as a translation of the earlier created baseline or as a translation of the current state of the project. This is the project to be translated. I'm changing the state of the project to in translation. I've set up the workflow in a way that makes Dita2 to automatically prompt me to create a baseline before I send the project for translation. I'm entering a name click create and the baseline that represents the current state of the project is now created. Dita2 also asks me to specify a location on my local computer where I want to download the project for translation. Dita2 puts all relevant files into a zip file and downloads the zip to the location I specified. Once the project is downloaded, the lock icon is displayed next to the topics included into the project. It means that by default they cannot be modified until the translation is uploaded back to the repository. However, because I was smart enough to create a baseline, I can now cancel the lock and keep working on topics. For example, I may want to update this topic. I'm going to add a new paragraph here. I'm now checking in the topic to save the changes. Now let's say that the translation is ready and I can upload it to the repository. Because I've created a baseline before sending the project for translation, I can now specify that the translation I've got is the translation of the earlier created baseline rather than of the project as it is now. I should also specify the location of the translated zip and the translation language. The list of the languages is completely configurable. All topics that have translations 
are now displayed with this icon. Since I've changed one of the topics, while it was in translation, the red exclamation mark is displayed over the translation icon. It indicates that the source content was updated and therefore the translation has to be updated too. You can see to which languages a topic is translated by rolling the mouse over the translation icon or by going to the topic properties. In addition to the translation status, you can also see a preview of the translated content. You can also see the translation status of the entire project. You can see here what topics were translated to each language and whether the translation requires an update. If you want, you can export this report to a CSV file that can be viewed in Excel, for example. I can now search for translations either in the entire repository or in a specific project. For example, I may want to search for all topics that were translated to German but whose translation requires update because the English source was changed since then. Data2 shows search results. From here, I can download the updated topic in English and send it to the translation agency or I may want to download and edit directly the German translation. If I publish the project through Data Open Toolkit, Data2 now allows me to choose in which language I want to publish the project. My project has a baseline, so I can also select whether I want to publish uh, the latest version or an early created baseline. If I publish through a third-party publishing engine and want to download the project from the repository, I can also choose in which language the project should be downloaded. And of course, here, I can also choose between downloading the current version of the project and the baseline. Just a few facts about Data2 translation management that you may find useful. As you probably know, Data2 automatically updates links in topics and maps when you rename or move files and folders within the repository. Links are updated both in topics and maps in the source language and in all translations. So you will never be in a position when a translation got broken links after you restructured the repository. Data2 will take care of the links for you. In some situations, you may want to exclude certain files from the zip you are sending for translation. For example, if you don't localize screenshots, you don't have to include them into the translation zip. Data2 allows you to specify entire folders, individual files, or files with a certain file name extension to be excluded from the translation package. We have customers that are translating to over 30 languages and are successfully using Data2 to manage all these translations. This was an overview of how Data2 can support your translation process. Please don't hesitate to contact us for more information. Also, we'll be happy to see you in our community in LinkedIn, where we discuss both Data2-related topics and general data issues.